Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Ralph Rangnick fears he has no time to save Manchester United's season. Ralph Rangnick is already under pressure at Manchester United. 17 Manchester United players are unhappy with Ralph Rangnick and want to leave. Rangnick has been told that transfer funds are available this month. So Rangnick will be backed by the Glazers this month as the club are dealing with the dressing room crisis. Rangnick has been Manchester United's interim manager for over a month now. Manchester United lost to Wolves last Monday night. That was Ralph Rangnick's first defeat as Manchester United manager and it was the first time Wolves won at Old Trafford since 1980. Reflecting on the poor performances under Rangnick, uh, Rangnick is blameless. The players have to take responsibility for the poor performances. The players are the biggest problem at Manchester United at this moment in time. So Rangnick is Man United's interim manager until the end of this season. Then it did mention that he will continue in a consultancy role for a further two years. But there again Rangnick got warned that he could lose the consultancy role if he fails to get Manchester United into the Champions League. I can't see Rangnick getting the Man United job on a permanent basis unless he can turn things around. Before Man United, Ralph Rangnick was the head of sports and development at Locomotive Moscow. Uh, Rangnick has made changes since he got recommended in. You know, he's brought three additions in. Earlier on this season, he brought Ewan Sharp in as an assistant coach and analyst. He also brought Chris Armas in as an assistant coach and he also brought Saz Challens in as a sports psychologist. I can assure in the summer that Manchester United will appoint a permanent manager and it's saying Eric Ten Hag is leading the race to become Manchester United's next manager. There's a lot of Manchester United fans that would be happy to see Eric Ten Hag come in. You've got to credit what Eric Ten Hag has done at Ajax. You know he's been Ajax manager for five years, he's won some trophies with them Back in 2019, he got Ajax to the Champions League semi-finals. I like the way he develops young players. He's got a contract with Ajax until 2023. Before Ajax, Eric Ten Hag managed Utrecht. Before then, he managed Bayern Munich's reserves. And before then, he managed go-ahead Eagles. Earlier on this season, Edwin van der Sar spoke about Manchester United's interest in Eric Ten Hag. Van der Sar is a CEO at Ajax. You know, Man United are looking for the fifth permanent manager since Ferguson. Manchester United have sacked four permanent managers since Ferguson. You know, we sacked David Moyes, Louis van Gaal, Jose Mourinho. And last year, Manchester United sacked Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. <coughs> Will Manchester United make a signing in this January transfer window? Now, there's a lot of players that Manchester United are linked with. Um, as you all know, Manchester United are interested in Ruben Neves from Wolves. 
He recently said that Man United are leading the chase for Ruben Neves. Um, it says Man United could bid around £35 million this month. Wolves are demanding £50 million. Manchester United have already held talks with Ruben Neves' agent, George Mendes. Uh, Ruben Neves is ready to leave Wolves. He's eager to show his skills at a bigger club, sources say. Neves played last Monday night against us and he enjoyed an outstanding game. You know, he had that very good chance from the volley, produced a good save from De Gea. Ruben Neves has been at Wolves for five years. Wolves got him from Porto back in 2017. Wolves paid around £15.8 million. He's under contract with Wolves until 2024. He's made 178 appearances for Wolves in all competitions. He is a midfielder and he's the age of 24. Manchester United are also interested in Boubacar Kamara from Marseille. Uh, we've been relentlessly linked with Julian Alvarez from River Plate. Revert back to the other day. He said Julian Alvarez is set to join Man United after Rangnick held talks with the player's agent this week. He said Julian Alvarez is set to become the first signing of the Rangnick era. Manchester United are prepared to pay the £17 million release clause to sign Julian Alvarez. Julian Alvarez has been at River Plate for a long time. He is not their academy and that. <coughs> His contract at River Plate expires this year. He's mainly a forward. He can also be deployed as a winner. He's only the age of 21. Man United have also been in for Erling Haaland as well. Um, obviously last year it did mention that Ralph Rangnick wants Erling Haaland. And Rangnick spoke to Erling Haaland's father, Al Finch Haaland, over the possibility of his son signing for Manchester United this year. And he said Man United were ready to pay his release clause. Haaland's release clause is, what, £68 million, pounds, but it doesn't become active until the summer. Um, I'm hearing that Haaland wants to make a move to Spain. Uh, Man United have also been linked with Usman Dembele from Barcelona. There was recently talks about a possible swap deal involving Dembele and Martial, but I don't want Dembele at Manchester United because he's too injury prone. Declan Rice, um, he's been a long-term target for Man United. Uh, Man United are confident of landing Declan Rice in the summer for £100 million. West Ham's disappointing December has given Manchester United a huge boost in the chances of signing Declan Rice. And Jude Bellingham, he's also been a long-term target for Man United. Uh, when Rangnick first came in, he identified Manchester United's midfield as a weakness. Rangnick's made it clear that he wants a centre-defensive midfielder. Now, there is very, very good players at Manchester United. You know, look who we've got. We've got the best player in the world overall. In Cristiano Ronaldo. Now I give you the news on Cristiano Ronaldo earlier on today. It said Cristiano Ronaldo is ready to quit Manchester United if the club's next manager isn't likening to him. 
The other week, Cristiano Ronaldo come out and said that I'm not happy at Manchester United, but a week ago, uh, Ronaldo's agent, George Mendes, said that Ronaldo's very happy at Manchester United. Basically, Ronaldo's demanding more from Manchester United this year. Manchester United have relied on Ronaldo far too much this season and he saved us quite a few times. Uh, revert back to the Norwich game last year, Ronaldo saved us because he scored the winning goal from the penalty spot. Revert back to the game against Atalanta away. Uh, that was 2-2, Ronaldo netted twice in stoppage time at the end of both halves in that game. He also saved us against Villarreal at Old Trafford earlier on in the season, that was 2-1. So if it weren't for Ronaldo, Manchester United would be in a worse position than they're in now. I think we're 7th in the league at the moment. Uh, Ronaldo's had poor games though since he re-signed for the club. He was poor against Wolves on Monday night. He did score but the goal was ruled out for offside. That was the correct decision. Uh, I thought Ronaldo was poor in the 1-1 draw against Newcastle towards the end of last year. You know, Didn't create a single chance in that game. Plus he could have been sent off in that game. Ronaldo has 14 goals in all competitions since he re-signed for Man United and he's got over 800 goals in his career. Uh, Ronaldo's won over 30 trophies in his playing career, including five Ballon d'Ors. He's under contract to Man United until 2023. There's an option of a further year. Ronaldo receives £480,000 a week, so he's the highest earner at Man United at the moment. He wears a number seven shirt. And we re-signed him last summer for £20 million with add-ons included. We've also got Mason Greenwood, that's a talented player. I think Greenwood has done pretty well uh, since he recovered from COVID. Greenwood obviously played against Wolves on Monday night. Yeah, he did well in the first half, however, of that game. He looked bright. Greenwood has been part of Manchester United for a long time. He's been a United player since the age of seven, hasn't he? There is no par academy in that. Um, he made his senior debut for the club back in 2019 and last season he signed a new four-year contract with Man United. Revert back to 2019, Manchester United offered Mason Greenwood a life-changing amount of money for him to leave. Earlier on this season, Greenwood did mention that he was upset that Ronaldo always starts. You know, we've got Jadon Sancho. That is a good player overall. But Sancho has done nowhere near as well at Manchester United as a lot of Manchester United fans expected. But it does take some players time to settle in, so Sancho needs more time at Man United. Sancho was poor against Wolves last Monday night. His decision-making was very poor. There was a part in the game against Wolves where he could have played Ronaldo through, but he decided not to. Uh, Sancho played quite well, though, in the 3-1 win against Burnley last Thursday night. Um, he did pretty much score, uh, but it got put down as a Ben Mee own goal because when Sancho struck it, it got deflected off Ben Mee. But I think the best game Sancho's endured since he signed for the club was the games against Villarreal and Chelsea where you know he scored in both of them games. You know, revert back to when we had Solskjaer, we couldn't get the best out of Sancho. Because 
Solskjaer persistently played him out of position. There was quite a few games Sancho didn't even play in under Solskjaer. Sancho endured four good years at Borussia Dortmund before he signed for Man United. Man United got Sancho in a deal worth £78 million with add-ons included. You know, Man United paid around £73 million up front. Sancho's under contract with the club until June 2026 as an option of a further year. Uh, Mantini Alanga, you know, he looks a good asset for the first team squad. Um, he has made quite a few first team appearances now. Um, I think there's a good chance he could be involved for the game against Villa in the FA Cup on Monday. Um, towards the end of last year, Anthony Alanga signed a new contract with Man United until June 2026 as an option of a further year. Um, Alanga of Risen Up Our Academy he joined Man United's Academy at the age of 12. Uh, we've got Bruno Fernandes, that's also a very, very good player as well. He's one of our best players and he's certainly one of the best signings we've made since Ferguson retired. But I think this season Fernandes has been very, very poor and I'm shocked in that aspect because revert back to last season, Bruno Fernandes was exceptional. Uh, Fernandes didn't start against Wolves on Monday night but he came on in the game and he had two fantastic chances. The first chance he hit the crossbar from close range and the second chance was from the free kick right at the end. Produced a good save from the Wolves goalkeeper. <coughs> Fernandez didn't play against Burnley last Thursday night because he was suspended. <coughs> he got his fifth yellow card of the season in the 1 1 draw against Newcastle towards the end of last year. Uh, Fernandez has been a Manchester United player for almost two years, or is it two years now he's been a United player? We got him from Sport in Lisbon back in January 2020. Earlier on this season, Fernandez made it clear that he wants to stay at Manchester United. And he, when he came to Man United, he said, I've come to Manchester to win trophies. He's under contract with Man United until 2025. There's an option of a further 12 months. Earlier on this season, there were talks about Bruno Fernandes extending his contract. You know, we've got Marcus Rashford. He has been a good player before, but Rashford is a poor player now. He's been very, very poor as Rashford since he come back from that shoulder problem. You know, he hasn't been the same player. You know, Rashford missed the first two months of the season with that shoulder problem. You know, will Rashford ever become world class? Uh, revert back to earlier on this season, reports from Spain said that Marcus Rashford could leave Manchester United. It said Barcelona and PSG were said to be interested in him. Rashford has got under a year and a half left now on his Man United contract. But he has been part of the club for a long time. He's been a United player since the age of seven. So... He is no power academy. He made his senior debut for Man United back in 2016. So he's been in our senior squad now for a good, what, five and a half, six years. We've got Edison Cavani. He's also a good player as well. Um, Cavani will leave Manchester United this year. Um, he'll leave in the summer because Man United are reluctant to let Edison Cavani leave on a free transfer this month. Prior to the Wolves game, Rangnick said in his press conference he desperately wants Edison Cavani to stay at Manchester United until the end of the season. Cavani's contract at Man United expires in the summer. Cavani had injury earlier on this season. 
Uh, Cavani has obviously been linked with Barcelona. It said last year that Cavani agreed to join Barcelona on an 18-month contract. Barcelona has seen Cavani as a replacement for Aguero. Because Aguero retired due to heart problems. Juventus have been in for Cavani and last year Cavani rejected a move to Boca Juniors. Man United got Cavani on a free transfer from PSG back in the summer of 2020. Uh, Man United have also got Donny van der Beek. That's a very good player as well but haven't had a great deal of a perception on him at Manchester United. Because Donny van der Beek has not been given enough opportunities. You know, revert back to when we had Solskjaer, didn't get enough opportunities. And under Ralph Rangnick, he hasn't been given enough opportunities. He's only started one game under Rangnick. I thought when Rangnick came in, you know, van der Beek was going to get the opportunities he was demanding under Solskjaer. Uh, van der Beek um, will leave Man United this year. We'll probably have to wait until the summer to offload him because they have been hearing that Van der Beek's not allowed to leave Man United this month. Uh, van der Beek remains keen on leaving Man United in this January transfer window. Recently, Van der Beek held talks with Ralph Rangnick to discuss his future at Man United. And it recently said that uh, Van der Beek had a bust up with his agent, so reflecting on that, he's unable to leave. Bayern Munich are no longer in for Van der Beek. Um, Van der Beek should have gone to Everton last summer. Uh, Van der Beek's only scored two goals for the club, and he's been a Manchester United player for over a year and a half now. This season's been his second full season at Man United. We got Van der Beek in a deal worth forty million, with add-ons included. He's got a contract with Man United till twenty twenty-five. There's an option of a further year, so he is versatile. Paul Pogba. He's also a good player. He's not only a good player; he's an imperative player as well. Now, I'll give you the news on Paul Pogba this morning. The Sun said that Manchester United have offered Paul Pogba a huge £500,000 a week deal. That will make Pogba the Premier League's highest paid player. Pogba's contract at Man United expires in the summer. Revert back to the start of this season, he rejected a new Man United contract offer. Uh, Paul Pogba has been out with a muscle injury for a while. Um, he got the muscle injury in France training earlier on this season. Uh, Pogba is expected to return uh, later on this month. Before Pogba got this muscle injury, though, he was in scintillating form. He's got seven assists so far in the league this season. Uh, Pogba's had a long-running transfer saga, hasn't he? He's been relentlessly linked with Real Madrid. His former club Juventus have been in for him. He did endure four good years at Juventus before he rejoined Man United. Uh, PSG have been in for him. Barcelona have been in for him. And Inter Milan have been in for him before. Pop has made 212 appearances since he re-signed for the club and he's scored 38 times. This season's Pogba's sixth season at Man United since he rejoined. He's won three trophies at the club so far. Manchester United paid £89 million for Pogba, so reflecting on that, he's our most expensive signing at the moment. Uh, we've got McTominay. He's a good player when he wants to be McTominay, but nah, I don't think he's really good enough to represent the club. I've got my reservations about McTominay. Uh, McTominay has played a hell of a lot of games alongside Fred. McTominay played against Wolves on Monday. Thought he was poor, gave the ball away too cheaply, but... He put a very good performance out last Thursday night against Burnley. He was the man of the match against Burnley, you know, scored. Uh, it was a good composed finish from the edge of the box. 
that was McTominay's first goal since February and his 15th goal for Man United. He should have had more than one goal against Burnley, though. Uh, I thought McTominay did well against Norwich as well last year and he did well on the opening day against Leeds. Uh, McTominay is suspended for Man United's next league game against Villa because he got booked in the game against Wolves. Back in 2020, McTominay signed a five-year contract to Man United, so reflecting on that, he committed his future to the club. Uh, Matic, you know, he's also good when he wants to be. Um, I've always had my reservations about Matic, though, because he's always been a static midfielder. Plus, he's ageing up and that. Matic isn't one of our first choice midfielders, but despite that, he still seems to get his opportunities. He's the only predominant centre defensive midfielder we've got. Manchester United got Matic from Chelsea back in 2017 for 40 million. So Matic has been at the club now for around five years. And you know, we've got Luke Shaw, that's a good left back overall. But uh, this season, Luke Shaw's been very, very poor, and I'm shocked in that aspect because last season, Luke Shaw was very, very good. Luke Shaw is injury-prone, which is a concern. He's had a couple of injuries this season. Uh, Luke Shaw's played the last two games. Um, he played against Wolves on Monday night. He was poor against Wolves. He got that yellow card against Wolves, so he's suspended for Man United's next league game against Villa. Shaw uh, played well, though, against Burnley last Thursday night, didn't he? You know, he had a good chance of his own, hit the side netting, uh, got forward well, got in some good positions, provided width, and he also set that early chance up for Ronaldo. You know, Luke Shaw has been at Manchester United for around eight years, so he has been a long-serving player. Man United have also got Alex Tellez, uh, that's also good. You know, he appeared to be our first choice left back under Rangnick. You know, Tellez has played quite a few games under Rangnick and to his credit he's been impressive. Uh, Tellez didn't really get much of a chance under Solskjaer. Uh, the reason Manchester United brought Tellez in was to provide competition for Luke Shaw. Um, earlier on this season, Tellez had injury for a while. Uh, we got Tellez from Porto back in 2020 for around 15.4 million with add-ons included. Harry Maguire. You know, he can be good when he wants to be. But you know what? He's not good enough for Manchester United. He's been abysmal this season as Harry Maguire, if I'm going to be honest with you. You know, Harry Maguire's got an injury at the moment, hasn't he? Um, he had a calf injury earlier on this season, didn't he, as well? And he had ligament damage in his ankle towards the end of last season. Maguire certainly wasn't worth the £80 million pounds that Manchester United paid for him. I thought Maguire was a far superior player at Leicester than he has been at Manchester United. Um, Eric Bailly, um, I think he's a good centre half, but you know Bailly doesn't really get in the team, does he? You know I do believe that Bailly will be leaving Manchester United uh, this year. Um, he's injured at the moment. He's Bailly. Um, he came off injured in the three-one win against Burnley. He's on international duty as well at the moment. Uh, Raphael Varane, he's also a good centre-half. But you know what? I think Varane has been poor since he come back from injury. Varane played against Wolves on Monday night. I thought he was poor in that one. Looked lethargic, caught off, out of position quite a few times. He didn't start against Burnley last Thursday night, but he came on. Because obviously Bay went off injured. Uh Ferran was poor in the 1-1 draw against Newcastle. Uh, misplaced passes and he was to blame for Newcastle's goal because he lost a possession in a silly area. <clears throat> Varane, 
has already endured two injuries since he signed for the club. Had a hamstring injury not so long ago and earlier on this season Varane had a groin injury and he was out with that groin injury for a few weeks. <coughs> uh, we got Diego Dallo. Now I think he's been impressive especially under Ralph Rangnick. Um, he appeared to be our first choice right back under Rangnick, but uh, the last two games, Am Wan Bissaka has started. Diego Dallo will probably leave the club this year. Um, last season, Dallo had a loan spell with AC Milan, so reflecting on that again, some experience. Man United got Dallo from Porto for £19 million. Pounds. Brought the Dallow win under the Jose Mourinho era. Manchester United have also got Aaron Wan Basaka. That's good when he wants to be. But you know what? He's been poor in a lot of games this season as Basaka. Defensively, most of the time, he's very good, Basaka. But the attacking side of his game lets him down. What Basaka's got to improve on, you know, his attacking's got to improve. His positioning's got to improve. His crossing also has to improve as well. You know, um, this season is Bissaka's third full season at Man United. Man United got Bissaka for fifty million from Crystal Palace back in the summer of twenty nineteen. You know, we've got David De Gea. That's a very very good goalkeeper. He deserves credit because De Gea's done really really well this season. He saved Manchester United quite a lot of times this season. De Gea was um, in goal for the game against Wolves last Monday night and he made good saves in the first half. The best one he made was from that volley from Ruben Neves. Um, against Burn the last Thursday night, De Gea had very little to do, but he could have been better positioned for Lennon's goal. Um, and he made several key saves in the second half in the 1-1 draw against Newcastle. The best save he made in that game was from Almiron. And uh, Dean Henderson, he's also a good keeper as well. Uh, Henderson will be leaving the club this year though. We need to get rid of him permanently. Henderson doesn't really get in goal because last summer De Gea reclaimed that number one spot back. Henderson's only made two appearances this season, but earlier on this season, Henderson had COVID, didn't he, if you do remember rightly. But towards the end of last season, Henderson got that number one jersey, didn't he? And he did well in a lot of the games he was in goal for last season. Henderson regrets signing that new long-term contract now. Because he did sign a five-year deal with an option of a sixth year. Uh, Rangnick's already told uh, Henderson that he can't leave Man United on loan this month. He's had quite a lot of loan spells, hasn't he? You know, he enjoyed two successful loans at Sheffield and before he had loan sp spells with Stockport, Grimsby and Shrewsbury. So there you go. So on my next video, I'll be giving you my reaction to Rangnick's press conference ahead of Man United's game against Villa. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel if you do. Consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very soon.